Hello, welcome to Theatre Doc Reviews with me, Paul Seven, and I'm here to see Emma Corrin in Orlando. Virginia Woolf's novel, Orlando, was written in 1928. Now nearly a hundred years later, this story concerning the fluidity of time, desire and gender seems incredibly relevant. I'm recording this on the day the Scottish Parliament is debating the Gender Recognition Act. Virginia Woolf's Orlando has been dramatised by Neil Bartlett and is playing at London's Garrick Theatre. At the beginning, Orlando, played by Emma Corrin of The Crown fame, is a young male aristocrat in the court of Queen Elizabeth I. In our first encounter with him, we catch a glimpse of his penis. It's a slightly startling and very amusing moment that sets the scene for the rest of the evening, as Mrs Grimsditch, his trusty servant come dresser come tutor come guardian angel, tries to get him to put his trousers on. Trouser wearing being quite significant in the history of ladies and gentlemen and others, as this play has it. Um, now Deborah Findlay in this role is funny, warm and passionate and provides the necessary foil for Emma Corrin's mesmerising performance as the romantic, confused hero. Of course Emma Corrin doesn't have a penis, uh, even if they prefer to be known by a non-binary pronoun. It's a prosthetic. And before long, Orlando has lost the penis and mysteriously become a woman as well as moving on many years to the court of King James the first, without getting much older. This time, to confirm the sex change, we catch a glimpse of her breasts, which I think were real, but then this is theatre, so who knows. In fact, theatre is a theme of this play, integrating the style of the ages of theatre into Orlando as he jumps through the centuries to the present day. This substitutes for the literary journey that Orlando undertakes in the original novel, although it's by no means as forceful a barometer for the changing attitudes to women uh, as we pass through uh, Jacobean to Regency to Victorian times, which are the worst, to the gradual liberation of the modern era. From the start, we know Neil Bartlett's dramatised version is going to offer the kind of inventive, freewheeling imagination found in the original novel, because no less than nine Virginia Woolfs appear, speaking together and separately, to tell us the multifaceted story of Orlando. Now, much as she liked being a man, Orlando likes being a woman more, and that's how she remains for the rest of the play, as it becomes a romp through of the history of women in our society. And just as there are many different Virginia Woolfs, Orlando discovers there are many different ways we can desire. Part of that discovery is about time as well, uh, that it's elastic rather than linear, and that, spoiler alert, life is to be lived in the here and now, even while searching for the ultimate goal, whatever that might be. It's above all a story which lords the poetic imagination above the prosaic. In a play where gender is fluid, uh, an entirely female cast, bar one, take on all the roles, which of course leads to some mockery of men. Lucy Briars memorably plays a blustering naval officer, as well as a haughty Queen Elizabeth. Orlando finds out what it is to be a woman, uh, and of course is more aware of this having been a man. Uh, the surprising effect that a bare leg has on heterosexual men the way misogynistic men subjugate women right up to the 20th century, that women can love each other, that love and betrayal go hand in hand, that women can dress as men and vice versa for practical as well as sexual purposes. Orlando is an every woman, or every person, rather than an, an intrepid hero or overpowering genius. And Emma Corrin is tremendous at portraying the inarticulacy of the character, the lack of understanding at times, the immaturity, but also the enthusiasm and optimism. They dominate the stage with their wide open eyes, knotted features, hesitant speech, squirming body and, of course, sparkling smile. It's a performance that is both funny and sad and thoroughly engaging. As with Orlando and Mrs Grimsditch, Emma Corrin's youthful exuberance is balanced by the twinkly-eyed experience of Deborah Findlay. Orlando's journey to maturity is not always pleasant, but it is ultimately hopeful. Although Neil Bartlett couldn't hope to convey the depth and complexity of Virginia Woolf's novel, he does pick the important themes and moments, and by introducing the author, 
many versions of the author, we get to hear direct quotes from her novel in her impressionistic, almost stream-of-consciousness way of writing. Like literature, theatre can take you anywhere in space and time with the power of your imagination. So, what could be a more appropriate vehicle for a play to show Orlando's journey? Director Michael Grandage and designer Peter McIntosh have chosen to build a set that looks like a bare stage, uh, with brickwork and a large metal door at the back, uh, and populated with the trappings of a theatre, or the backstage of a theatre, ropes and counterweights, a uh, large costumes basket, a clothes rail, a step ladder. And the set within the set mainly comprises simple chairs and tables, and frequently a bed, which starts large and becomes much smaller in Victorian times. Having set up the theme, I think Neil Bartlett could have put it across more strongly in the script. Also missing were the deeper relationships. Orlando's first love, Sasha, whom they never forget, is played with verve by Michelle Wong, and his last love, Marmaduke, is given a sensitive portrayal by Jodie McNee. So both are present, but even so, Orlando seems to skim across the surface of his life. Nevertheless, it's an entertaining evening that, at one and a half hours, didn't outstay its welcome, and I give Orlando four stars. I hope you've enjoyed this review, or at least found it useful, and if you did, please subscribe and like. Uh, if you want to read my reviews, you can go to theatre.reviews, and you can follow me on Mastodon, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you for watching.